Welcome back to Still Watching World Inside with Tian Wei coming to you live on CGTN. We live in the IT era when it's easy to save files on computers and get data through the internet. But on the other side of the coin is that once your computer is attacked, you risk losing important data and never getting it back. Over the past few days, the nightmare became a reality across the world. A ransomware called WannaCry hacked computers worldwide and forced the users to pay ransoms for their files. While the infection rates have slowed down, discussions are going beyond the malware itself. Pay ransom within a week or you'll never get your files back. The malware called WannaCrypt did make many around the world want to cry. As of Monday, it reached 150 countries and infected more than 30,000 machines. Computers running the UK hospital network, Germany's national railway, and scores of other companies and government agencies around the world were paralyzed. Uh, despite appearing to be criminal activity intended to raise money, it appears that less than $70,000 has been paid in ransoms and we are not aware if payments have led to any data recovery. However, Microsoft's president, Brad Smith, pinned blame on the U.S. government for not disclosing more software vulnerabilities, saying the ransomware were drawn from hack tools stolen from the NSA. He hopes the governments of the world would treat this as a wake-up call and abide by the same rules that concern weapons in the physical world with cyberspace as well. Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, criticized the U.S. intelligence agencies for losing control over their own creation. We are fully aware that the genies, in particular those created by secret services, may harm their own authors and creators should they be let out of the bottle. And this issue needs to be urgently addressed on a political level to elaborate ways to curtail it. The information about the vulnerability that is being exploited by the ransomware has actually been public for some time. Microsoft has released a patch a little while ago. But the attack's unusually large scale proves that patch isn't enough. There's extensive information online about how exactly the exploit performs and what exactly it impacts. But when you talk about how to, you know, prepare for a threat like this and how to patch against it with a large organization, it's a little bit more complicated than do we patch or do we not patch. So far, it's still unknown who is behind the cyber attack. But rather than finding the hackers, the more important issue for the world seems to be how to better prepare against this danger. Well, what can we do against them? In Washington, D.C., we invited Dr. Ernest McDuffie, the founder of the Global McDuffie Group. And also in Boston, we have Robert Siciliano, a security analyst with Hotspot Shield. Also on the phone in Shanghai with us briefly, he will be joining us. Shen Yi, who is the Associate Professor and Director of the Research Center for the Global Cyberspace Governance with Fudan University. Gentlemen, I want to welcome you to our program. First of all, very important question. Who should be responsible for this? Mr. Siciliano? So ultimately, the uh, responsibility lies on the user. That's just the way it goes. Uh, the security of your device requires you as an individual or as a small to medium business or large enterprise to make sure that your devices are properly secured and patched. Really? Is the responsible, responsibility <laughs> lies with the user or is the burden lies with the user? That's a very different question, isn't it, Dr. McDuffie? So, yeah, I don't know if responsibility <laughs> is the right word, but certainly the, uh, the evildoers, the person who launched the attack is ultimately responsible. But I absolutely agree the user is the one who could have had his machine already patched with available information that was out there and not been affected at all. I, I think it really goes to the importance of uh, the broader need for education and training for the masses. Uh, everyone who inter intersects or uh, interacts with the internet needs to be aware of the the threats that are out there and yeah. understand what they can do to mitigate them. Well, even they are aware of the threats out there, Mr. Siciliano. What else can they do? They have to use computers. They have to use certain software because the software are already dominating the market. Yeah, Microsoft's operating system, of course, is uh, the single most ubiquitous. It has. Um, 
80 plus percentage share of the marketplace opposed to max and uh, going forward you know consumers need to recognize that security awareness not, needs to be part of their lexicon that uh, keeping your devices properly updated your antivirus anti spyware anti phishing and a firewall making sure that your operating system has the latest greatest security patches uh, should be fundamental to computing it's not an option to you know pull the covers over your head and uh, you know ignorance being bliss uh, does not work today if you're going to use your PCs for banking online for e-commerce uh, for conducting, uh, you know, any type of uh, small, medium, or large business uh, users, uh, the end user, uh, the enterprise, they need to make sure that those devices are properly secured, because in today's day and age, uh, technology, yeah. PCs, the internet, is a central part of our critical infrastructure. Well, it's easier said than done. You call on them to be able to safeguard the software that they produce but they apparently just have some problem at this moment so what can we do are we at a critical time Dr. McDuffie that we could do nothing about the danger that we're facing right now because it has become so professional so sophisticated about one field that the other ones were not necessarily in that field or not necessarily the expertise about that would not be able to do anything no, I, I don't see this as a particularly uh, any kind of inflection point. I mean, these issues, the technology, the uh, the malware, the ransomware has been around for uh, quite a while now. Right. This idea of awareness of the of the of the public and what they can actually do about it is is the critical piece. I, I completely agree with my colleague on the on the uh, this let, call. Let, let, let's just uh, talk about. Have to, okay, have to we have to recognize both of you are from the industries. One is representing uh, the association of many of the software makers, and the other, of course, has been, you know, doing a security software yourself. So obviously, you're representing the industry. But the question is, what can they, they do in order to protect themselves? Let's talk about this WannaCry, for example. Uh, Microsoft have been updating its software for years. How much do you expect one consumer to be able to follow all the latest? of Microsoft in their computer and is it fair for consumers to do that and would the makers of software purposefully put certain kinds of problems over there therefore they have to have the consumers to update their products next time these are all very eligible questions I guess so so the uh, the they issue certainly with are. the software and, makers you know, and Mr. McDuffie go first, ahead. and then go to Mr. Siciliano. Mr. McDuffie first. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The the uh, the question about um, consumers keeping up with all the updates. Well, Microsoft has made it very very easy to do that. The updates are pushed out automatically, and you can set your computer to automatically accept them. Uh, if that settings are, are done correctly on your system, uh, the the uh, user doesn't even have to uh, be concerned. It happens automatically. The idea that there are errors in the software is a part of human nature. Uh, software is created by human beings and there's always going to be uh, errors in the software. So this idea of uh, patches always coming up is something that we're going to be living with until we find a way to create software that's perfect all the time. Well, Dr. McDuffie, even though I'm not necessarily a computer scientist myself but I do understand even though you update some of the versions it does not necessarily mean you're going to be safe after all and meanwhile once certain product into the market for some years those updates already disappeared that I know so Mr. Siciliano are you two just trying to brush away all the responsibilities with the software makers and trying to say okay consumers it's your job once we sold to you it's done so <clears throat> I understand and appreciate uh, your pro-consumer champion <laughs> perspective. At least that's what it sounds like. No, okay. <laughs> now, it, it, nobody, nobody wants to come from the perspective of blaming the victim. And that's certainly not what my colleague and I are doing here today. The reality of it is, is that Microsoft produced a flawed operating system that had a vulnerability that the NSA, a U.S. government agency, essentially discovered and exploited. And that, that exploit was leaked 
to the public, or at least via uh, some internal flaws that the NSA has on their own. All right. So they have their own security issues that they need to deal with to, where they released that vulnerability to the wild. All that being said, there is no such thing as 100% security. In, in anything that we do as a species, there's no such thing as 100% security. So, yes, the security companies, the software developers, Microsoft and others, they have a responsibility to make sure that what they deploy is in fact secure. But this is an ongoing evolutionary process. The software itself, the hardware, continues to evolve. The, the, the hard drives become bigger and faster. The operating system uh, it, itself is a much more uh, complicated than it was back in Windows 3.1 yeah. or Windows 98 or 95 and so on. And so the, it is, there is always going to be errors and vulnerabilities. I know. And so I know. Mr. Suzanne, I know. Mr. I know you would say that. I know you would say that because you're going to say, well, you know, anything cannot be 100% safe. So why do we focus on this so much? Why don't we look at the other cases where, in which we're safe? But the thing is, it is influencing computers worldwide, 150 countries. Everybody's being asked to pay to those hackers. So at this point, we still do not know what to do. And this is going to spread even further. Even though the speed goes down, it is still going further. We don't know when it's going to stop, do we, Dr. McDuffie? Well, I, I would say that the, the fact that uh, so little money has actually been uh, received uh, back to the bad guys, I think the bad guys are going to uh, re realize that this is not really a money-making venture. And uh, eventually, I think there's a good probability that they will be identified and, and apprehended apprehended and so that's that's going to happen as well this idea of that there's nothing we can do is not completely true besides the uh, activities that the end user can take law enforcement local law enforcement around the globe has the ability to help mitigate these uh these illegal criminal uh, hacking activities now this is not state to state spy stuff this mm. is criminal activities that all uh, countries uh, recognize as something that's not good uh, for their own, you know, um, um, okay. administration for their own people. Well, so a lot of law enforcement uh, are collaborating to uh, attack this problem. Well, it is. They are co collaborating, but we are seeing Dr. McDuffie and Mr. Siciliano a very interesting phenomenon that when there were no problems, whether it is uh, the science, com uh, the peculiar computer science or it is the you know security issue or the public they're saying to one another don't mess with my field we don't want you to know too much but when there are problems we begin to say it is your problem you have to fix it this is what you need to do so we are seeing the balls being kicked into each other's court but eventually the thing has to be resolved this problem has to have a solution where does the solution right now come from, Mr. Siciliano. We wait for the good heart of those hackers? Is that what you're saying? So the, the current solution, of course, is to make sure that your devices have automatic updates. Right? This is a, uh, a feature that Microsoft offers, and as long as your devices are set to automatically update, in general, you should be in pretty good shape. Beyond that, uh, making sure that you have basic security installed, which, which includes antivirus, and of course having your firewall, a two-way firewall turned on. So these tools are available uh, to the consumer, to the business, and as long as they run automatically in the background, that generally should protect. However, the um, other aspect of this is to make sure that the consumer themselves, or the, the end user, are not socially engineered, which mm. essentially is being tricked into, into clicking links that they're not supposed to, to downloading files they're not supposed to, to be engaging in behavior okay. on the web that puts them and their devices and data at risk. Well, Dr. Matt Duffy, what do you think? This is no different than, this is no different. <laughs> Dr. But McDuffie. Finish yes. your thought. Okay, so they, uh, he's absolutely right. Well, they, th this is. Th there's due diligence <laughs> right. that the end user can, can apply. Uh. Uh, and there's also the issue of uh, zero-day threats. You know, there, there's always going to be new threats out there that'll 
be able to, to defeat some of these uh, methods that are, are going are being taken. The the best thing that you can do is not only follow all those best practices, yeah. but educate yourself as much as you can and those around you. It's a network, and the weakest link is always the person you know that there's, there's always going to be a human element that hasn't you know d doesn't have a strong password is clicking on all the crazy sites, and once that person is infected, it can spread right. to other systems. So there's a there's a program in the United States called NICE, the National Initi Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, that focuses on education well. and training for everyone so that you're aware of, of what there are educational about. programs like that but obviously it hasn't solved the problem as we have seen uh, with this specific mm -hmm. case and on the phone right now mr shen yi at the uh, center for communication and state governance research in fudan university i guess you're coming from i hope a different perspective <clears throat> so i have to say first all your discussion on this issue is completely wrong it's not a virus it's a cyber weapons we're talking about it's not a virus attack. It's the proliferation of cyber weapons. So it's obvious it's the state and the government has special responsibility for it. In the United States, there is a debated discussion how to control the so-called lawful access from the government side, in which including that government will explore the vulnerability and the zero-day backdoors inside these softwares. The real purpose of the per, uh, announcement from the Microsoft companies, it targets U.S. government such kind of policies will do damage to its economic interests. But the real challenge is we lack a regime that help us to control the, pro uh, the proliferation of such kind of cyber weapons globally, just like we control the proliferation of nuclear device and related technologies. So do you have world. solutions? Dr. Shen, it's easy to identify the problem. The question is, where is the solution, particularly with the current crisis? We have to put an end to it. Current crisis already has been controlled. The companies already find a very easy technical ways to solve it. The problem is we need to now, they immediately, the governments from both sides and all related countries to initiate a negotiation, how to control and avo avoid such kind of pro proliferation again. The job we need, the media, the company, the individuals need to require the government to start starting up such kind of negotiation and dial dialogue as, right. as possible. Right. While at the same time, you need to upgrade and uh, continue patching your software. Every time we have a crisis, we have a long list of we, what we need to do. But every time when the crisis is over, everybody forget it. Take a look at the history of ransomware. The first known malicious software is AIDS malware that uh, appeared in 1989. Ransomware evolved into 30 active kinds with uh, different kinds of things. In, 19, in 2013, the first uh, to demand Bitcom to forward payment. Last year, we also see the first ransomware to target Apple's OS X and Lucky was delivered through Microsoft Word documents. All of these have been some of the histories of ransomware. Now, solutions. We have only one minute left. We talked for about 20 minutes. Do we have solutions for this specifically? 30 seconds for every one of you, Mr. Siciliano. Solutions. Of course, update your operating system, install antivirus, run a virtual private network, I use Hotspot Shield and encrypt your information on your devices on free open Wi-Fi. Engage right. in security awareness training. All right. Dr. McDuffie. Yeah, as far as solutions are concerned, there's some, there's some small level of optimism that advances in artificial intelligence, which has been talked about a number of times on this program, mm. uh, may provide an, an even greater level of protection uh, against these uh, type of uh, weapons. I agree with uh, the other speaker that these are really not just viruses, no. they are cybersecurity weapons. The difference being between nuclear is that it, it, it's not okay. a limited number of people that can create these weapons. Uh, a person with a high school education and, a, and enough imagination can create the same kind of tools that uh, state actors are creating. So policy at the national level is far be below 
or what's happening technically, I you see. have to do exactly what's been said. You have to address all the education and training issues and, and best practices. Dr. Ernest McDuffie, Robert Siciliano, and Mr. Shen Yi, thank you so much for joining us. That's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us, World Inside CGTN, into your search engine, or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and see the Weibo from me, Tian Wei, and everyone on the World Inside with Tian Wei team. Thanks for watching, and tune in again next time for Insights across China and around the world. Good night.